Hello there. It's a beautiful sunny day here in the forest. Most of us enjoy when the weather is pleasant outside. But have you ever wondered why the weather... Perhaps you've been outside when a strong wind began and you wondered where it came from. In this program, we will learn what causes weather and why it changes. Let's learn more about weather. Some of the most important news we ever receive tells us what our weather is going to be like. Or what is happening because of the weather all around the country. Have you ever wondered just what weather is? Weather is the condition of the air. Weather reports usually tell us four things about the air. Temperature, air movement, which is the wind, the amount of moisture in the air, and the air pressure. We can say that weather is caused first by the fact that there is air or atmosphere around the Earth and that the sun gives us heat and energy, and also the fact that our Earth rotates on its axis, affecting some of the motion of the air and bringing us night and day. The sun does not directly heat the atmosphere, but the sun does heat the Earth and the warm earth heats the air. The earth gets more heat when the sun's rays are coming straight down, as at noon, than it does when the sun's rays are coming at a slant, as in the morning or evening. A flashlight will demonstrate this. Pointed at an angle, the light is spread out over a large area. Directed straight at the card, light is concentrated on one spot. In the tropics, close to the equator, the light rays always come straight on. So these areas have hot climates all the year around. Farther from the equator, the sun's rays strike the earth at a slant. With the sun's light spread out, it is weaker. The winters are cold. Because of the very slanted sun rays and the period when there is no sun at all, the North Pole and South Pole are very cold. The Earth is tilted on its axis. As it revolves around the Sun, the Northern Hemisphere is first tilted away from the Sun in winter, and then toward the Sun in summer. This, of course, gives us our season. it expands and becomes lighter. 
cold, heavy air tends to sink down. The cooler air moves in and forces the warm, light air to rise. At the equator, rising, warm, light air begins to move toward the poles. Cold, heavy air from the poles moves in under the lighter air from the equator. Air expanding, rising and sinking and shifting position with temperature changes is moving. This is the wind that the weatherman talks about. The motion of the earth causes some winds to blow in the same direction. Such winds are called prevailing winds. Because wind affects the weather, an instrument called an anemometer is used to measure the speed at which the wind is blowing. This is the first part of the story of weather. And here are the important points to remember. Weather is a condition of the air. The earth, warmed by the sun, in turn warms the air. The temperature of the air affects the weather. Warm, light air is pushed up by heavier, cold air. This makes the air move and causes wind. These are two of the conditions of the air that the weather reports cover. We will find out about the others in the next part of the weather story. We've just learned that changes in the weather are caused by air that is constantly changing and moving. Let's go to the window of knowledge to learn about two very important things which affect the weather. Pressure and humidity. In part one of the weather story, we saw how heat and cold affect the air and help cause some wind. Now we come to the story of air pressure. The air surrounding the Earth has weight. It has enough weight to press down and all around you with a force of several tons. Warm, expanded air has less pressure. Being light and expanded, it will hold more moisture. Cool, dry air has high pressure. The instrument that measures the changes in pressure and is used to help predict weather is called a barometer. The pressure caused by the weight of air keeps changing all the time. Water, whether in the ocean or even an open beaker, evaporates or turns to vapor and goes into the air. The amount of moisture in the air is called humidity. As air becomes warmer and lighter, it can hold more and more water vapor. But it finally becomes saturated, which means that it can hold no more. The temperature at which the air becomes saturated is known as the dew point. 
when air touches a pitcher of cold liquid, it is cooled below the dew point, and some of the water vapor condenses. The dew point varies with the amount of moisture in the air. If the humidity is low, the dew point will be low. Dew is formed when water vapor in the air condenses on cool objects near the ground. When the air temperature is below freezing, it condenses as frost. Clouds that form in the sky are droplets of water vapor that have condensed around specks of dust. A fog or mist is simply a cloud that is formed near the ground. Clouds usually develop when heavy, cold air pushes the light, warm air upward. Clouds also develop when warm air is forced up over a mountain. If the air temperature is above freezing, the clouds are made up of droplets of water. If the air temperature is below freezing, as it is at very high altitudes, the clouds are made up of crystals of ice. These are called cirrus clouds, and they form four to five miles above the Earth. When cold air moves slowly in under warm air and forces it up, long, even clouds form where the two kinds of air meet. These are called stratus clouds. When warm air is forced up rapidly or pushed up over mountains, the big clouds that form are called cumulus clouds. These often develop in hot weather. Electrical discharges in them cause lightning and thunder. So they are sometimes called thunderheads. In the movement of air within the clouds, the small water droplets may condense as they pass under a cold layer of air and fall as rain. Rain is one type of precipitation. When rain falls through a layer of air 32 degrees Fahrenheit or below, the drops freeze and turn to sleet. Sometimes, the wind violently forces the raindrops up and down through layers of warm and freezing air. With each rise and fall, they build up more layers of ice until they become so heavy, they finally fall as hail. When the air and temperature of the cloud is below freezing, when the water vapor condenses into crystals, these crystals fall as snow. A cloud from which there is precipitation is called a nimbus cloud. The word nimbus is combined with the cloud name, such as nimbostratus or cumulonimbus. The 
important points to remember here are first, that air has weight and exerts pressure. Changes in air pressure bring changes in weather. We may expect rain or snow. We may expect dry weather. Second, the amount of moisture in the air is called humidity. And it is the condensation of this moisture which causes precipitation. In part three of this series, you will see the rest of the story of how weather is made. I think I just heard some thunder. I hope it doesn't rain here in the forest. Now, let's take a look at how temperature, wind, pressure, and humidity combine to create a storm. In parts one and two of the weather story, we saw how cold air is heavier than warm air. Warm air being expanded will hold more moisture. Changes in air pressure bring changes in weather. Our weather comes to us in a parade of high and low pressure areas. These are called highs and lows. Lows may be rainy and stormy. Highs are usually cool, dry, and sunny. Highs and lows are kept in motion by the heating and cooling of the air the formation of winds and by the rotation of the earth. The meeting point of two different air masses is called a front. There are four kinds of fronts. A cold front comes when a fast moving cool mass meets a warm air mass and shoves it upward rapidly. This often causes a quick storm. Followed by rapid clearing. A warm front is when a warm air mass slowly slides up over a cool one. Stratus clouds form, often across several states, and it may rain or snow for days. An occluded front develops when a cold front eats a warm front and lifts it very high. The resulting weather may resemble that of both a warm and a cold front. Sometimes a cold or warm front stands still until it moves it is called a stationary front.
In a typical storm, a mass of low pressure air laden with vapor in the form of clouds begins to slide up over a cold high pressure air mass covering thousands of square miles. At the head of the warm air mass, warning of the storm to come, ride the high ice clouds, the cirrus formations. A few hundred miles behind them, lower down on the wedge of upthrusting air are the stratus clouds, followed by the stratocumulus. The sky darkens. The cloud deck is low and almost black because the clouds are now so thick that little sunlight can get through. The droplets in the clouds, forced up and down by turbulent air, condense as larger drops. And the rain comes down. runoff in some places. Finally, the storm begins to break up. The weather is changing again. On warm, moist days, the same weather conditions that could bring about a thunderstorm may cause a tornado. In a tornado, a current of air whirling fast forms a funnel-shaped cloud of dust. Spinning at up to 200 miles an hour or more, the winds in this small cloud can do severe damage. is the hurricane. Most of the hurricanes that strike the coastline of the United States form in the tropical areas of the North Atlantic Ocean. can be watched so that towns in their path may be warned.
in our part of the world, the weather usually changes often enough as it progresses through the four seasons. As it wears away and changes landscapes through the ages, the weather keeps turning the cycle of evaporation. Water to clouds, then rain again, back to the land and sea. Through season after season, year in, and year out, helping to make possible all life on Earth. I hope you've learned a lot today about what weather is and why it changes. The weather is important to our planet, so the next time you see it change, try to remember what caused it. Well, I have to go now, but I'll be back. Goodbye! sure you see the other shows in Concord Children's Video Encyclopedia series. You'll learn about dinosaurs and strange creatures, weather, African animals, space and early rockets, life under the sea, and many other subjects. Have fun while you learn. They're affordably priced. See you soon. <laughs>